Hello everyone, welcome to the Adobe Fonts Show. Welcome all, we're live. Indeed, we are live once again. Episode 19, I believe, if I've got that correctly. Ari, how are you? I'm doing well, Ben, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, it seems we might be having an issue with the chat. Um, Ari, are you seeing messages in the chat? Oh, there they go. They're I starting am. To show up. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, good. We have Sean and Kara here. Um, it's morning for me in San Francisco. It's 8 a.m. So let us know where you are and what time it is for you in the chat. Indeed. Ben, what time is it for you? It is 11 a.m. Well, 11 oh one and 30 seconds a.m to be exact i'm in brooklyn um east coast for me and uh still morning time but not quite as early as it is for you ari and uh our guest is somewhere in between so we'll leave it vague for now but somewhere in between <laughs> the three thousand miles between us uh our guest uh, is there as well so yeah yes let us know where you're from uh in the chat where you're uh, joining us from always nice to hear that See, Noor showed up, and Cody, our moderator, awesome. Fantastic. It's good to see some familiar names, and let us know if you're new to the Adobe Fonts show as well. We always get excited for new people to come on in. So we have Tamara from Houston. It's 10 a.m. For Noor, it's 8 p.m., so we're 12 hours apart. <laughs> Kara is in London. It's 4 p.m. Awesome. Nice. Well, we can jump in to. Yeah, I think we're going to start with our, our audience poll and uh, and see if we can get a little sense of where people stand on this particular very important topic. Yes. How important is font choice in an invitation? You might guess that this is related to our topic today. Um, so let us know by number, which one you agree with. Is it one? Absolutely crucial. Two, I'm not going if it's Comic Sans. Three, definitely going if it's Comic Sans. And four, I don't think it matters too much. So, um, let us know in the chat, use the number, which one of these you are. Are you, are you leaning in any particular direction? I... Uh... Well, I think number one for sure. But then I also feel like there's an added layer of will I go if they use Comic Sans or not? And I think it depends because a lot of times if they use Comic Sans, it's someone who's doing like a community center potluck type of thing. Mm -hmm. And they used, you know, the font that they thought was most welcoming that they had available. They don't have that many fonts on their computer, so they use Comic Sans. And maybe people are going to bring really delicious foods, yeah. and it's going to be really down to earth and a fun event. But it could also be terrible. So I don't know. That's kind of a gamble for me. I think, yeah. Numbers two or three. <laughs> As I like to say, Comic Sans um, is, a, is a mix. It's a mystery, truly. It's uh, you never know what what's going to happen. But I think if there was a wedding invitation using Comic Sans, this guy would be there for sure. You know, <laughs> um, so that's where I'm leaning. Let us know in the chat what you think. Um, I agree. I think someone said in the chat that Comic Sans is unnecessarily vilified. I agree with that. I think, Ari, to your point, it is a friendly font, obviously friendly f font. And it's usually the one that people know they have and is on their computer. And so when yeah. they need something friendly, that's what they use. I do find it a little bit funny when you see like an actual physical sign that's been made like metal letters of real signs that uses Comic Sans. And you just imagine that someone paid someone to cut Comic Sans out of a sheet of metal. There's just something. I've a little seen bit... it. Um, I've seen it carved in stone Ooh. in a in an old building oh, yeah. and Norsh actually just said they used it for comic sense. I mean, they used comic sense for the vaccination card in my country. Oh, that's pretty good. I hey, like that. they're trying to keep things friendly. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Um, um, but we have, I just wanted to say about the chat, I guess some people can't see it, but if you cannot see the chat on Behance, click on the info tab and then click back to the chat. It should come up. Awesome. We have a lot of activity in there. So don't miss out on that. 
Um, everyone's telling us where they're from. Most people are saying number one, absolutely crucial, which means you're in the right place because we are going yes. to talk about fonts and invitations. Indeed. Um, and we have, um, I just wanted to mention where people are coming from. We have Nashville, Barbara's in Nashville, Lizette is in the Netherlands, oh, and they awesome. had Sun for the first time this week. <laughs> Nice. Um, yeah. So we can keep going. Awesome. Well, we are going to dive in a real quick demo of Adobe Fonts for those of you that are new. I know there's some familiar faces in the chat right now, but hopefully we have some new people. And uh, if you've not used Adobe Fonts before, it is you know 20,000 fonts that you can use with your Creative Cloud subscription. You can use them even in third-party apps on your system as well. Um, and through the Creative Cloud subscription, you get access to all those fonts. And we've created tools on the Adobe Fonts team to make that easier to navigate all those fonts and find what you're looking for and find the right font for the right job. So uh, Ari is going to show us a little bit about how you can get started with that. And then we'll dive into our to our topic for the day. Yes. So if you've never been to the Adobe Fonts website before, this is what you would see once you type in fonts.adobe.com. And you can just type in a font that you want to search for right in the search bar without even exploring anything else, if there's something you know you want. Um, but if you've never been here, go right now and check it out. <laughs> um, you can also look through some inspirational images, some suggestions of fonts that are kind of new to the library. You can use visual search, which means you take a screenshot of fonts that you, or letters that you find in the wild, mm -hmm. drop it in here. It'll find similar fonts for you. You can deep dive into, ooh, look, there's us. Hey. Um, watching our live streams. You can explore by designer. If you want to look at, you know, fonts that are created by a specific designer. So there's a lot here on the homepage if you're new. Um, but I would just, let's say I... I know I need to use this font brand and grotesque for my project because it's being used by another designer that I'm working with. And they're like, Hey, it's available on Adobe fonts. All I have to do is type that into the search. And then that family comes up and all I have to do is once it loads, um, activate all, all the family, if I need that, or if I don't need the whole family, I can go down manipulate the text size to you know see the details nice. type in the headline that i want or the text that i want and then view all of the weights of it and decide which one i want to activate once i click activate that font's available in all of my desktop applications whether they're Adobe or not, my Adobe apps. And all this is included in your Creative Cloud subscription. Um, and another thing to note is that all of these fonts are available to add to a web project as well. So web licensing is included in all of the usage that we um, offer to you. Another thing I would point out on our website is that you can go to our Foundries page, which shows our featured Foundries at the top and then has a directory of all the foundries we work with showing where they're from. So if you want to see um, a foundry that's in your country or you want to see a foundry that you've heard about and you want to see all the fonts that um, they've designed, you can click on one of these. For example, if we clicked on Debbie Sementelli, I have it already here. She's our guest for today. You would go to her Foundry page mm -hmm. and you can see a lot more info about her. She has her social media here. She has her description, a video she's created because she does have a YouTube channel as well. And then all of her families. And again, I can choose the sample text that I want and then browse through. I can see all the images she's created to showcase usage of these fonts and it's a great way to see the fonts that a foundry has created all together because usually they do have a theme or a specific genre that they work with. It's kind of like if you like a band, you probably like a lot of their songs. 
kind of similar. If you like a designer or a foundry, you might like other fonts from that foundry. So yeah. yeah. So this this tour was kind of if you know what you want already, um, this is all included for you. But if you have no idea what you want, you can also go to our browse page um, that is the all fonts tab and use any of these filters on the left. So any of our tags, our classifications, and those will help you narrow down. So definitely go explore those. If you have any questions, let us know in the chat mm -hmm. about using the Adobe Font Service. Yep. And definitely check out some of our previous videos that are on our Behance channel, such as getting started with Adobe Fonts in any app anywhere mm -hmm. that shows you how to actually use them in the apps. And that and includes mobile apps too, which is exciting. In indeed. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so that was our little tour. Fantastic. All right, well, let's introduce the topic for today. Many of you probably are joining us for this particular reason. We're very, very excited to uh, to discuss DIY invitations with Debbie Simontelli. Debbie, welcome to the Adobe Fonts show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, we're excited to have you. Um, very, very quickly before we dive into the topic at hand, how did you become um, a lover of letters? Uh, let's say that. Where, where, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, a little bit of that story. <laughs> okay. Well, I started off as a calligrapher and um, I did, you know, many, many, many envelopes for wedding invitations and started also to design some wedding invitations. Everything was by hand, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, I also did brush lettering. And at some point, um, I working with these brides and, you know, moms of brides. And sometimes they would say, we have this limited budget, so we can only have you do the envelopes. We can't have you do like the name tags or the um, place cards um, or, you know, table cards. And I said, you know, if I could take my hand lettering and make it into a font, they could just buy the font and then they could do this themselves. So that was really what motivated me to go from hand lettering to font designing. Nice. And, um, and you know, I never looked back. It's been a, a wonderful way to provide people with beautiful lettering that they can use themselves. Yeah. And of course, Adobe Fonts makes it so easy because they can test out, you know, whatever words or their names and, um, and see what it looks like in, you know, what is it? 20,000 different ways. <laughs> awesome. So th this stream yeah. really has to do with how you got started with the hand lettering and invitations and all that stuff. This is, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 So I kind of have a, you know, um, a tendency to create fonts that are made for DIY cool. and made for invitation designs, because that was kind of my original, mm. um, relationship with lettering and and you know doing it for people fantastic shall we uh shall we dive in get started yeah awesome let's go okay so if you see on my screen um we're going to be covering how to create a beautiful wedding invitation in photoshop we're going to talk about how to choose a font that fits the event and we're also going to talk about how to find hidden gems in a font so you may not be familiar with the fact that within a font, there is something called a glyphs panel. And this is one of the places, but there's plenty other places where font designers will put extra things for you to use. And it's really worth um, checking those out because there's a lot of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cover some of those as we go along. So the first thing is thinking about how to choose a font that fits the event. So what are the things that you really want to consider? Of course, the first thing is the type of event. You know, a children's birthday party is gonna be very different from a wedding. Um, you also wanna look at the location and the setting. You wanna look at the venue. And also, most importantly, the personality of the honoree or the host. So in the situation that we're going to be designing today, this invitation, the event is a wedding and it's dressy and small and intimate. It's being held in California at a winery and the couple is very modern. 
So the look, look that I'm going for is something very fresh and clean. Mm. So we're going to start with our basic copy. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through using uh, the word or the name Sarah. I'm going to take you through how you would search for a font to see what might fit the need that you're looking for. So we would go up to our font list and there's a little icon here that is the Adobe fonts icon. So if I click on that, it's going to show me all of the fonts that I currently have activated. And right now I'm looking at all the classes of fonts. But if I want a script, which I do, I can just mm. go to script and it will show me just the scripts. So now I can kind of just literally move my cursor over each font and I can say, okay, this is an option, alfresco, Bickham script, a little bit too um, formal and traditional. Can not as fresh. Pro? Yeah, not as fresh. <laughs> um, maybe this is not, this is too casual. This is too traditional. Um, this is fun, but I don't get the feel for the dressiness there. Mm. And so I'm going to land on Hello, My Love. And it just happens to be one of my fonts <laughs> that is um, one of my favorites and was created in honor of my 35th wedding anniversary. So it makes it really special. Nice. That's so cool. Yeah. So and let us know in the chat, too, if you have opinions or thoughts about what yeah. Debbie's choosing. Yes, definitely. So um, now I'm going to show you where you can find some of the hidden gems. So there's several ways that you can locate them. The first thing you do is to highlight a letter. And then if I right click and go down to show alternates for selection, I'm going to see a box with all of these different choices. Nice. But I'm going to go to another option because it's a little bit easier to, uh, to kind of navigate. So if I go to type and panels and go over to the glyphs panel, I'm now going to have the entire font at my disposal, but I want just the S's. So I click on entire font and I go up to alternates for selection. And now I'm seeing just the mm. S's. So I can literally just click through these. I'm just double clicking on each box and There's start a lot to of variety in here, like very different yeah. feels. I, as I say, I like big fonts. I cannot lie <laughs> <laughs> because I myself like to have lots of options. Um, and here's another little hidden gem. So you see this S and how it has an extended um, swash. That is meant to use if you have a T in the name. So if, if you had Surat or, you know, Sweet or anything like that. And, um, and there's another one that also would serve that purpose. So in addition to being decorative, a lot of times designers will create letters that can play well with others. Mm. Now I'm going to land on this one because I think it has just enough of a feel for a dressiness, but it's still fresh. So I'm going to stop there. And now I'd like to add an H that has a little bit more something wow, to it. Wow, there's so many. <laughs> Whoa. Yes. Yeah. So did you do this for every glyph? Does it all have this many alternates? Yes. The, wow. There's a lot of, of glyphs because I basically can't stop myself. Like <laughs> <laughs> I keep, I look at it and I go, well, what if it did this? And what if it did that? You know? And um, so, yeah, I kind of go overboard. Uh, Debbie, but, um, <laughs> Debbie, Katie in the, in the audience asked, is there a way to know the intention of each swaths, I think swatches, or is that, I think that's swash. What I, swash, yeah. So is there a okay. way to know what the intention behind each of these different glyphs and versions is? Or is it a lot stylistic? Of times, right, a lot of times um, you will see like in the images that a, that a designer creates to show off their font, mm. they, might, they, they might specifically choose like that S you know, to go into a word that has a T so that they can show you that. 
but it's very hard to um, show all of the different things that mm -hmm. you know font designers um, create. And you can use look at the user guide. So sometimes they'll put it in the user guide. Um, but a lot of times it's just kind of playing. Okay. And yeah. sometimes people come up with things that I didn't even think of. You know, so that's <laughs> that's always fun. I'm like, wow, I, I didn't even think of using that. So there's it's just really a matter of playing a lot. Yeah. So now so now we've got the word. Another question, there, Debbie, then. that I know the answer to because you showed me, but is there a okay. T that can go with that S that doesn't have a crossbar? Yes, there is, in fact. So let us uh, let's switch this S again. And so let's put this S here and let's just throw a T in right here. Now, when I highlight this and I go to show alternates for selections, here is a crossless T. OK, mm. that needed to be. It needs to be at the end. Or yes, earlier. it does. <laughs> it needs to be. Stara. Yeah. There we go. Satra. Put it right there. Satra. <laughs> oh, yeah, that works. So I can go there or. Stara. I like Stara. Uh -huh. Stara and Thomas. Ooh, there. nice. And again, yeah, so she's have... thought of everything. So. Right. You could have the, you know, the other S, you know, work that way as well this, okay this other s is more for when you have one that is a little later or, in the word yeah, in the yes middle. exactly totally yes. nice. okay nice so um so we'll just leave that b and i'm going to show another hidden gem cool so we have our word and here and again this is because designers know that and is used especially for invitations in different ways so one of the things that you can do in this particular font is you can go to your character box and down here you see that we have all these different options. Mm. So the ST is called discretionary ligatures. And when I click on that, it changes Whoa. to a really fun um, and. And that, that just happens automatically? It happens automatically. That's called coding. So we code that so that it will do that. Cool. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So there are many things that you might find just by playing around, like I said, with these little buttons on the character box. Cool. So now let's say that we have our, um, okay. So now let's say that we have our uh, font choice picked out. But now we want to have something in the background that's going to really give us a little bit more of a oomph. We want we want to kind of really punch things up. Mm. So here is a really easy thing to do to give yourself a fun background. You simply create a fresh modern look with watercolor. And all you need is a big brush, a small scrap of watercolor paper just for that texture. And you can use gouache paint, which is a water-based paint, or watercolor. And once you play around with it and you get a shape that you like, you simply take a picture of it and put it on your computer. So it's already a JPEG. And now you just drag and drop it into Photoshop. So that's what it's going to look like when it comes into Photoshop. Now we want to get rid of this watercolor background. Had we done this on a really large piece of watercolor paper, then we might have used that because the background would have provided some texture. Mm. But I did not do that, and that's okay. We can just get rid of that background by using the magic erase tool. So if we come to our, our um, eraser, and you'll see that there's a magic erase tool down at the bottom. And when we click on the, the um, photo, it's going to ask if you want to rasterize this before proceeding and you want to say yes. And now we simply click on that. And sometimes you have to click a lot just to get it out. And, and that's what we're going to end up with. Ooh, nice. So, 
Yeah, so we've got some texture in there from the paper, which is really cool. And we've got some, some subtle differences in the blues, which is fun. So now we want to get this into our document with our uh, wedding invitation. So the easy way to do this is come up to Window, Arrange, and go over to Two Up Vertical. And now you have them side by side. Nice. So now, yeah, easy peasy. Now I'm simply going to make sure that I am on that document and on that layer. And I literally move it and put it into that document. And now I've I never used this to yeah. up vertical before. Yeah, it's really cool. when you when you have a lot of um, a lot of files and stuff and you're trying to transfer some things, it's really helpful to use. Yeah. So, yeah. So now let's look at let's turn that off for a second and turn that off. All right. So now imagine that we have completed the names Sarah and Thomas. And you can see here we've got some beautiful flourished uh, letters in the word Thomas. So it really is working nicely. We've got our beautiful blue background. I like but now we want a little something else. I, yes. I just I like how some of the the swashes or swoops are kind of going off into the white and then coming back into the blue, you know, yes. like for Thomas and and even at the end, the S there is kind of overlapping with a little bit of white there. It just looks nice to have those interacting. Yes, yes, I like that too. Yeah, and it so, makes it a little less stuffy and formal to mm -hmm. have that free kind of watercolor. Yeah. And I just right. wanted to welcome, I know we have a few more people that just joined. If you're new to the stream, we're talking to Debbie Cementelli. She's a type designer and a foundry partner from our service, Adobe Fonts. And you can find her fonts on Adobe Fonts. She's showing us how to make a DIY wedding invitation and all of the little tips and tricks you can use. If you're on YouTube, come over to Behance. That's where the chat is and that's where we'll be answering your questions. Indeed. Go ahead. Yes, welcome to everybody who's just joining us. And um, so now, I'm going to want to add something else. We, we want to have another element besides just um, fonts. So luckily, and again, this is another like hidden gem kind of thing. Not only do I have a separate ornaments font that goes with the Hello My Love um, font, script font, but also within the Hello My Love script font, you can find ornaments. So I'm going to now add some ornaments. So I'm turning this on because I just kind of wanted a place marker here. But what we're gonna do is we're now going to look through ornaments. So if, again, I go up to my type and now because I'm on script, I want to go back to all classes so that I can find the ornaments in there. So I click on that. And again, let's get that glyph panel up. Yeah, because so we can see, is, so we can see everything yes. that's in here. Right. So we're going to say entire font because there's only so many 80 something uh, ornaments, I believe. So we already kind of can look and see, okay, let's, let's try a few out. That's, that could work, but it looks too fall. And that could work. That's, that's an a interesting option. That's too, too much. Uh, no, not working. Okay, this has a good feeling to it because it's kind of going off to the left. I can see that if we enlarge it, we can do the thing that um, <clears throat> Ari brought up that we can have, or Ben brought up that we could have some of it going into the white. Mm. So mm. I think we're gonna stick with this one. But again, I wanna show you something else that if you just go to Hello My Love Pro, and you go into the um, list, you can go down to ornaments and oh. you see that I've also included some ornaments. There's kind of a handful of ornaments. And yeah. these, these little entry uh, strokes, these are so that you can add them to a beginning letter. So they Ooh. all fit perfectly 
with every lowercase letter. So that's another little hidden gem. Nice. Yeah. And I wanted to point out that Cody posted the Photoshop document Mm -hmm. in the chat that shows the hidden gems in the Hello My Love font. So you can- Oh, great. Debbie has them all laid out there and you can explore and see all the possibilities in that PSD that's posted. Yeah, Debbie put that together. Download that if you wanna experiment with Hello My Love and and just be able to navigate some of these um, options. And she laid it out, it's color coded, it's it's freaking awesome. And hopefully we'll be able to show it at the end a little bit too, once we're done with this, but yes. definitely download that. And I will be making I will be making a video to put on my YouTube channel to help people follow along when they play around with it. Fantastic. So you can look forward to that in the next probably few coming days. So now let's imagine that we kind of wanted to do something with our body copy When it's centered, it's more traditional, but again, we want it to be modern and fresh. So what if we did this? What if we moved it over? You can see I've enlarged the ornament Mm. so that it does go off into the white. I've added another smaller ornament and it just kind of balances this space over here, the ornament space and the blank space here. And then we brought the script font down here to tie in. And we also added a little small ornament here that ties in with these. And that's where a designer is always thinking about all the different things that you might need um, in your projects. And so we're putting in all these things that work well together. So you don't have to go outside of the, of the font and try to find an ornament. Like we're making things that were meant to go with the script font or with whichever font we've designed. Nice. So that is what our final ornament or our final invitation would look like. Now, I wanna show you how you could extend that and let's zoom in so I can really show you all of these. Very cool. Wow. Big. All right, so here, let's go down a little bit more just so we can clear it a little bit more. So we know we've got our invitation there, but you're gonna need other cards. You might need a details card. So you can see how we've used that ornament Mm -hmm. again. We've brought that in and it's from the same set of ornaments. And this particular flower is what's in this ornament, but it's also duplicated here. And yet it's something that's totally separate. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. All right. So now we also have an RSVP card. Nice. And again, we've got these special alternates that I've created just for this occasion. So you can do fun things like this. I like that and then, the R is lowercase, but you still were able to add the that flourish, um, even though it's yes. lowercase. That's super nice. Yes, I have a lot of flourish lowercase. <laughs> awesome. Like very tons. And then what about adding a pop of color so that when this is included in the invitation set, you know, it's kind of a nice bright thing and it's very fresh. The color is very fresh, the blue and yellow and white. And again, we just added our little ornament here to tie it in. Mm. And even on the envelope, so this is an example where we've used that S and T. Mm. And I'll show you a little trick here. So I've coded um, Roman numerals so that, again, when you click on contextual alternates, I'm going to turn it off. So you see, it's just a capital I and a capital V. But when I highlight that and click on contextual alternate, it becomes so cool. Yes, because that was something that I heard from a lot of designers of, um, you know, wedding invitations that they said, look, we have a lot of people sometimes that have Roman numerals in their names. And so can you create something that makes it easy for us yeah. to um, to change that? And so you could probably, you know, use another font and try to 
tweak it in there, but it's so nice that this is just the same, you know, contrast and a, and the V has that little, you know, brush stroke kind of thing going on at the end. So it's, yeah, it's just nice to tie it in exactly. like that. Exactly. All meant, that was one of the biggest comments I got from a lot of people that I have, you know, uh, that test my fonts um, and they are invitation designers and they were like, Roman numerals, you know, please. <laughs> Please include them because it's so hard to make it work and make it look like it goes with a font. So um, I have Roman numerals. That's that's one of my cool, one of my favorite things. We have a question in the chat mm -hmm. from Katie and Michelle's also wondering how long it must take to design a font like this. <laughs> um, this was a year. Wow. It yeah. was a year of design. <laughs> Not surprising. It's yes, so hard to work. Yes. Most of, I do big fonts. Again, I just, I love all the possibilities. I love giving people like lots of choices. And, and I just, I have so much fun with all of the alternates and trying to, you know, come up with the ornaments and everything. So it's, it's really a labor of love. And, um, and I just want it to be something that's extremely useful for people. So I like to take the time to do that. So probably, I can't think of any of my fonts that did not take a year. Really. <laughs> wow. I, yeah. Uh, this yeah. reminds me of a question of my own that I would like to mm -hmm. ask. Um, I make music. That's my, you know, thing that I do uh, for, for mm -hmm. creative outlet. And I'm sure you run into this with fonts as well, which is how do you know when something is done? Like, how do you know when a song is done? How do you know when an album is done? How do you know when a <laughs> font is done? Obviously you add so many things to it that you could keep going. But at some point you have to go, okay, this is solving enough problems and I'm happy with it and you could tweak forever. So how do you kind of judge when it's time to put something out in the world and let, let it go and be free? Right. And I rely on testers a lot cool. because when, you know, in the beginning, when I first send them the beta and they're like, oh, could you add this? Or, you know, oh, I need more of this. Um, and when, when I hear back from them where they go, there's like nothing more you could add. Like it's got everything, you know, that kind of tells me that, okay, I can stop now. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So when the, when so, the, when the please add this stops coming in, you're like, okay, we're good. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. And that's where I really appreciate having that feedback because again, my whole goal is to make it usable. So I want people to have what they need. And, um, you know, that's, the, that's everything to me. So when I get that, you've covered it all, then I'm like, okay, we can stop now. Awesome. <laughs> so I think we have some time to um, look at the hidden gems. Yes, this um, is the document graphic. that was posted in the chat. So download that if you want to try this out. And uh, Debbie's going to show you some of the awesome stuff that's in here. So, right. So um, you can see, first of all, that it is color coded. So what that means is when I when it says standard ligatures, these two T's will change. So, for instance, if I highlight, Debbie, can you T's, zoom in a little bit? Yes, thank that's you for small. telling me that. Whoops. <laughs> okay, don't do it there. Okay. <laughs> And we have a few more people that joined. So Debbie Cementelli, who is our foundry partner and type designer, is going through one of her fonts that's available on Adobe Fonts and showing all of the features. Mm -hmm. And we just looked at some DIY invitation design. So you can always watch the replay of this too. It's going to be on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Or you can rewind from the beginning if you're just joining. Great. Yes. Welcome to everybody who's coming. And this is a Photoshop file that you can download. I believe there's going to be a link in the chat or could be already yeah. and play along. Um, I'm just going to demo a little bit, but it's really pretty clear cut that if you follow the little directions and follow the color coding, you'll be able to experiment in a really safe way. So it's okay if like you mess up this document <laughs> versus doing, you know, something to uh, one of your invitation designs and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't fix it now. Um, so again, we're going to use this little character panel 
and you can see the the um, first one is standard ligatures, that little FI. Awesome. So if I click off of that, it's a little bit hard to see, but those are two separate individual T's. So they don't really cross well in the mm. middle there. So that is why designers create mm. a standard ligature so that it can automatically um, cross. Now you can also try out discretionary ligatures mm. and you can see that has a little bit of a longer crossbar. So always play around and look for things because you never know where you're gonna find some hidden gem. What does discretionary ligatures mean? So standard is typically how, like I'm gonna go back here and turn that off. So this would be standard meaning like that's a standard size crossbar. You know, the T's are pretty standard. Um, to go along with the rest of the font. But if you want something that generally is a little bit jazzier <laughs> and maybe has, you know, something that's a little bit more fun, a little bit different, so, then that's where you're going to find discretionary ligatures. So it's, it's the pizzazz button is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. I like that, Ben, the pizzazz button. And um, for those of you who did just join us, one of the things that I was showing before was that I've included Roman numerals in my font. And so if you go to um, click off of contextual alternates, let me move, whoops. And that's a, it's all these alternate or these different, the ligatures and these alternates, um, you can, you can start to figure out why you put them in these different categories when you've made the font because a contextual alternative of, co of course is that if there are three capital i's in a row chances are that's going to be a roman numeral and so you turn that on and it automatically knows right mm -hmm. um, right so it knows the and context again, and then changes yes the, exactly yeah. that is that is what we that's where you code um in a font you code things to go uh to do a certain thing very cool and that's all you need to know about coding. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the same vein, so we've already kind of covered the contextual alternates and the standard and discretionary ligatures. In the same vein, like let's say you have, um, you know, a capital letter and you just kind of want it to be a little bit dressier. So this would be the normal standard capital M. But if I want to instantly add some swash to it, again, I can press that pizzazz button. I like that, Ben. It's now going to be the name of that, yes. <laughs> of all the buttons, the pizzazz button. And there I have the swash caps. And again, you can always go to the, go to type panels, glyphs panel, and you can choose alternates for selection. And you'll see all the different choices that I have created for your uh, capital M Fantastic. and for every You could letter. really create two different things that look like completely different fonts. Absolutely. Um, like two different you, invitations and people wouldn't know it's the same font. Yeah. Right. Right. It's really, it gives you that customization, customized customization. Mm. There we go. Yes. I can say it now. <laughs> <laughs> and then remember um, earlier I showed people and for those who are just joining I'm I'm going to show you this in action so we have within the hello my love pro font we have some um, swashes so I'm going to go to again the character or the glyph panel and these are just in the hello my love font the hello my love ornaments font is a totally separate thing or why is it not showing up? I there? think you had selected the text. So it's. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, sorry. So um, the way that this works is you can see that I type, I can change this. Whoa. And I can make it any beginning letter, any of the beginning letters. So this specific this. flourish. That mm -hmm. each one you're clicking on is at the the right height to be an entrance stroke to any of the lowercase in the font. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Now you can see I why. I think it that's took a something year. that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons why it takes a year. But also, I think this is something that a lot of script 
fonts don't have because it's really hard um, and mm -hmm. something that when people design script fonts don't consider that how different it is from lettering because every combination has to have an entrance and exit stroke that hits the next letter exactly. at the right point. That's yes. really hard to do. It is. It is. And, um, you know, it's, but it's, it's fun to, to give people those options. Yeah. And so yeah. that's kind of like, you know, encouraging to do that. Now we're also going to, I'm also going to demonstrate the crossless T here. So again, I'm in the hello, my love font, and I'm choosing alternates for selection. I'm going to move that up there. Maybe that can be seen better. And so you can see here, I have a crossless T. And so if I combine it with this D, which has right here, which has this line going over, and you can even, nope, that's not going to work with that one. Sometimes I forget which one. There we go. So um, it actually will cross that for you. And of course, you could use any number of letters that will also cross that T. And, and so this, if someone wanted to recreate this from scratch, mm -hmm. they would use a lowercase T and then look for the alternate crossless T. And then exactly. they could go through the, the other alternates for the opening letter and find something that exactly. fits. Yeah. Exactly. A little bit of experimentation, and, but you've done most yeah. of the work for them, Debbie. Let's be honest. <laughs> yes, yes. And in the same vein, we have here, this is a an L that is a straight L, so it can be used as a T. So Ooh. that's, yeah, that's another little tricky thing there. So you could, again, you know, choose any number of, beginning letters that have a loop or a swash that comes over and use that combination. Nice. And then again, we have this option. So you can use your crossless T and then you can choose either of these. Let me go over here. So here is a crossbar. This is a crossbar too, and this is a crossbar. So you can use those crossbars to cross your crossless T. And you can see nice. I've used two of them here and I use the short one here and the long one here. And you could technically use that third one too. Just... We have a comment from Angelica says, mm -hmm. she's filing all this great information. Thank you for all your time and effort that has been put into creating this. It's so detailed. Yeah. Oh, you're so welcome. It's my absolute pleasure to do it. Um, I have a lot of fun creating fonts. And um, I love letters. I love flourishes. <laughs> I love, you know, very fancy letters. And, and, um, and it's fun when you can do that and make it easy for people to use them. Um, so you just have to play around a little bit to find where all the cool stuff is. But in general, uh, you can find it if you play around. So yeah. um, and really quickly, so then, for anyone that yeah. has just joined us recently, if you're not seeing the chat live on Behance, click the info tab and then switch back over to chat and it should start showing up again. And I think we're still having some people who aren't seeing their comments, but that should fix it for you. It's a pretty quick fix. So, cool. yeah. Okay. So now here we have, um, let me move this out of the way a little bit and I'm going to close that out so you can see better. So generally speaking, not all, but uh, many font designers, Laura Worthington is one that um, definitely does this as well. We create ending letters that don't have the, oops, that don't have the connection um, line. So you see how on the top, these letters, oh here, these letters have a connector and that's because mm. they're meant to join with other letters. But when you write and you're ending a letter, you don't, always use a connecting letter at the end. So what we did is we created contextual alternates. And you can see here that instead of going up, it's a shortened um, ending stroke. So yes. if you typed out the word ABBA, like the band, mm -hmm. then you would use the, a, the, a at the, use the, the A at the end would have the little swoop, but the A at the beginning would not. Right. Can we see that so you, just for my own joy? Because oh, yes. I love ABBA. So, 
Okay. <laughs> so first I'm going to just show you so you can see that the red is exactly like the um, black right mm, now. Yep. But if I, again, here's the little pizzazz button, contextual <laughs> alternates, boom, it changes. Yeah. So to for those of you that aren't familiar with contextual alternates, to remember what it means, it's the context. So mm -hmm. where that letter falls in the context of a word will determine how it's shown. So like now we're saying these letters are meant to be at the end of a word. So right. in the context mm -hmm. of a word, they're at the end, therefore they have a smaller exit stroke. Right. Or in the case of the J, it's just a different exit stroke that's more natural. I can't think of any words that end in J though, but I'm sure there's a lot in multiple languages. Yeah, there are. That's the other thing, all of the diacritics, you know, that are available. Um, they also are, you get, every single uh, alternate is also made into a diacritic. So here we go, ABBA. If we turn off the contextual alternates, then it has the connecting stroke. But if we turn on contextual alternates, then it ends. Nice. Now there's your ABBA. Thank and then, you. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. <laughs> And then you can see at the bottom, um, typically in most fonts, there's more than one ampersand, and you can find those in the glyph panel. Also, Debbie, can you scroll up so we can just a little bit see oh, those? Yes, yes. There we go. Is that good? Awesome. Yep. Yeah. So um, you can find the ampersands in the glyph panel. Again, most fonts have more than one ampersand, or a lot of fonts do. You can also find discretionary ligatures. You can see here's two examples. So these are like usually fancier. Um, and then sometimes there's things like the and and the, the, the word number or abbreviation for number. Mm. You can find things like that. And then ordinals as well. So if you're you know, mm. going to get married on the 1st of May or the 2nd of June or the 3rd of October, <laughs> or the 4th of December. There we go. We got them all in. Um, then you can find these ordinals and all of these can be find, found. Again, you go to type and panels and glyph panel. And when you just scroll through this little list, you'll see here's all the discretionary ligatures. Very cool. You'll see everything, the standard ligatures. You'll see the, whoops, sorry. You'll see the ordinals. So that's another thing to explore is go in the glyph panel and just play around with even everything is put into stylistic sets, um, which is, I would say, less used, but it's just going to kind of sometimes some people want to like try out one stylistic set. But um, I think it's easier to, you know, go up and just uh, click on access all alternates. You all also will see all the swash. Very so if cool. you want, you say, I want really, really swashy letters, just go straight to the swash and you'll see all your choices there. Fantastic. We had a question from Michelle. How does mm -hmm. Debbie start with a new font? Is it with hand lettering? Yes. Everything I do starts by hand. Um, you know, because that is where I feel like I get the feel of the font, like literally through my hand, you know, um, I think about like when I designed Hello, My Love, I literally was thinking about my 35 year marriage, my love for my husband, our relationship. And I, I literally had all those feelings inside of me and the only way for me to get those out onto paper is through my hand and through a pen or a brush mm. so i start with paper and pen i have like hundreds and hundreds of sheets of letters and words and i and after usually about like the 35th sheet i'm like yeah i'm feeling it and i i start to get the sense of what i want it to look like and it's starting to come out and so it, you just keep refining it and refining it and refining it awesome. and then of course you know creating all your alternates and everything so yeah it's a 
it's a very it's a very zen like um, process because you're really trying to um, put the feeling that you're having um, into the paper and and eventually onto a screen and have it vectorized and not lose that feeling. Fantastic. Uh, we are coming up on the end of our stream, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Before you leave us, uh, there's going to be a stream right after this, and it should be fantastic, so stick around. But I wanted to point you all to Debbie's Twitter, Letterhead Girl, and Debbie Cimentelli on Instagram. The, these are the links here. And then, of course, visit Debbie's Foundry page on Adobe Fonts. Download Hello, My Love. Try it. Activate it. Try it out. Get the Photoshop document. Experiment all that stuff. Debbie, you put so much thought and so much uh, detail into all this. Thank you so much for doing that and for sharing all this My information pleasure. with us today. It was really, it was My really pleasure. excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks everybody for, for joining us. And I hope it was really helpful. And please reach out if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help. Fantastic. And then- Awesome, uh, thank you. If you enjoyed this stream, Follow us at Adobe Fonts on Twitter and at Adobe Fonts on Behance. That's where we post about all this stuff. Hopefully, we'll have Debbie back in the future for another, yeah. uh, another possibly a Halloween invitation. My birthday's Halloween, so we could do that. I know it's now in the past. <laughs> too but far away. I know. I don't know. I just, it's my birthday. What can I say? All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. And definitely download that document and uh, experiment with some hidden gems and fonts. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Debbie. Thanks. Bye.